Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. So glad to see that you are all joining here to understand about our uh, BS programs. So today we will give a brief overview of what this BS program is all about. And then uh, from there, we will uh, go ahead and try and answer many of the questions. Some of you have submitted questions which are there in the uh, which have been submitted through a Google form. So uh, while uh, a few others have actually been attending some Google Meet sessions with uh, the people here and have asked questions. So based on that, we have prepared FAQs. So we will try and answer all your questions. You will also keep a tab on what is being uh, asked in the YouTube link. So hopefully you will be able to address all your concerns and uh, we'll be happy to help you in any way. So let me start with the presentation. Let me actually share the slide that we have. Uh, give me one second. Let me just share these slides. Okay, I hope everybody is able to see the screen uh, and uh, are able to share. So first of all, I would like to uh, just inform everybody that we have two different uh, BS programs. Uh, the BS in data science and applications is something many of you might have heard of. So this has been running in this institute from IIT Madras for the past uh, two years. So we have a very large number of students in this program already. So recently IIT Madras also launched an electronic systems program, uh, which also follows a very similar model. But electronic systems program has uh, more hands-on uh, labs and we'll talk a little bit about that program as well so to give you an idea as to what these two programs are all about and how you can be a part of this program so uh first of all most of you who are here would have qualified for je advanced you would have taken your je main recently and uh, you would have qualified for a je advanced so for students who have qualified for je advanced you are eligible to directly enter into the BS program in the three terms. So first of all, I want you to understand that this program uh, does, has three terms through which the, semester, the courses are taught. All courses are taught in all of these terms. So we have a term which starts in June 2023, and we would have a term which starts in towards the end of September 2023, and a term which will start in January of 2024. So as uh, students who have qualified for uh, JE Advanced in 2023, you will be eligible to enroll for courses in all these three uh, terms. So uh, the upcoming term will start in June 2023. So I think the classes will start for this on, uh, in, on June 2nd. So the recorded lectures will be released on June 2nd and you will have time to watch the videos and uh, do assignments and so on. Okay, uh, that will you will be given about ten days time to do that. So, uh, students who are qualified for JE Advanced are deemed to be directly qualified. So they don't you don't need to pass the JE Advanced to start this program. So this uh, basically, if you have cleared JE mains and qualified to appear for JE Advanced, you already have earned admission into the foundation level of this program. So you can actually enroll for courses, register for courses, and start taking uh, courses in this program. So you have for doing this, you would have to apply through the form. And this is for the June 2023 batch. So as I was mentioning, there are three batches which happen every year. So if you are interested in starting the program in June of 2023, then you can fill the form and you can submit the form with the details required. So we will verify the documents and once, the, once we confirm that the documents are valid, we will enable course registration to the foundation level. So what is the foundation level? What are the courses there? We will talk about that. So there are eight courses. So we will go into details of that foundation level. Some of you might have seen this on our website as well. But uh, right now, if you fill the form, you will be able to register for the June 2023 batch. So if, if, however, if you are interested in the September 2023 batch, you would have to apply for that sometime after the middle of June. So you would have uh, those forms will be opened after the middle of June. The uh, so you can look at July as the timeline where you will be able to uh, apply for the September 2023 batch. 
So if you are interested in take, uh, joining the program at a later date, that is also possible. But if you are interested in starting right away in June, then you can actually use this uh, time to apply and start registering for courses. Another thing we want you to understand is uh, this program is actually delivering content through online uh, mode, which means there will be recorded lectures, there will be live sessions which will be conducted uh, in the evening time, which will also be available for you to watch at a later time. And you will have to do uh, assignments and submit them online. And exams will be conducted in person. These exams will happen uh, on Sundays. So it will not clash with any of your other regular uh, activities, which means you can actually pursue these uh, bachelor BS degrees from IIT Madras while you are enrolled in a physical college as well. So you might be enrolled in an IIT or an NIT or some other uh, college where you are pursuing a, a physical college degree. So it could be a BTEC or a BE or some other science or uh, other degrees, you can still continue uh, doing this BS program. There are more than 10,000 students who are currently doing this uh, program in this mode. So please understand that business and end term exams will be happening on Sundays. So it will not clash with any of your uh, regular schedule for your uh, physical college. So this is possible. And this has also been enabled by the regulatory bodies. UGC has come out and said that students can pursue two different degrees simultaneously. So if you are uh, pursuing a BE or BTEC in a physical mode, you can still pursue this BS degree. Then uh, we, uh, there is another uh, term, which is the qualifier exam. So please understand that qualifier exam is specifically for students who are using that to uh, join the program. However, for students who have uh, already qualified for JE Advanced, you are deemed to have uh, qualified into the program, which means you will have to appear for this as a quiz one. So uh, you have uh, two quizzes and an end term exam for the courses. So you can choose to do any number of courses uh, out in the first term. You don't have to do all four courses. You can choose to do uh, two, three or one course as well. And you can appear for the quiz one and uh, then take the quiz two and the NSEM exam. So JE advanced uh, qualified students can who start the program in June will be appearing for the quiz one, which will happen uh, sometime in July. And then quiz two, which will happen later in the end term exam as well. Okay, so you can choose an exam city until about one month before the exam date, which means that uh, these exams could actually be uh, taken in any city. So uh, you might actually be in your hometown right now, but once you join a physical college, you might actually be going to a, a different city. So there you might want to take the exam in the subsequent uh, for the subsequent uh, exams. Like quiz one, you might take in your hometown, but quiz two, you might be in a different college, different town. So you can change the exam city at that time and uh, take the exam there as well. Okay. So here are the basic eligibilities for the program. So anyone who has passed class 12 can join and there is no age limit for this program. And students who have cleared JE mains and qualified for JE advanced are admitted directly into the foundation level of this program. So for the electronic systems program, uh, maths and physics in class 12 is required. But for the data science program, uh, maths and physics is not mandatory. But considering all of you have actually appeared for JE, I'm assuming all of you would have completed maths and physics in your uh, class 12. So you would be eligible to join either of the programs based on your interest. You can choose to apply for the, you can choose to join the BS in data science or the BS in electronic systems. So uh, let's quickly go through what this uh, UG program is. Uh, so there are uh, two different modes of entry, which you can see here. So the inbuilt qualifier exam is not directly relevant for students who have qualified for JE advanced. So I will not go into the details of that program for this session. So here uh, I'm trying to explain how the JE qualified students uh, will join. So if you have uh, passed class 12 and qualified to appear for JE advanced, you are deemed to be admitted into the program. Please understand that you do not have to 
clear JE advanced to join this program. So this is the program where only JE main qualification and eligibility to appear for JE advanced is required. So this would mean you join in what is called as the foundation level of the program. In the foundation level of the program, we cover some basic concepts which include math, statistics, and uh, some programming basics and English. So there are eight courses in the foundation level. If you complete these eight courses, you earn a certificate from IIT Madras. So this uh, certificate will give you enough background to uh, understand some basics of programming and some statistics which could be useful for data science. Right? So uh, if a student chooses, they can exit the program at this level as well and uh, get only this certificate. If the student chooses to continue, they can get into the diploma level where they have uh, the skills-based education. So there are two diplomas in the data science program. One is the diploma in programming and the other is the diploma in data science. So you have two different programs, uh, diplomas which are possible. So each diploma has six courses and two projects. So completing two diplomas requires completing 12 courses and four projects. So at this level, students can choose to complete one of the diplomas and exit with only the one diploma, uh, either the diploma in programming or the diploma in data science or they can choose to complete both the diplomas and also exit with both uh, diplomas in programming and data science. From this level, after completing the diplomas, the students can continue to the uh, degree level. The first level of the degree is the BSc level, where the students will do some electives and expertise will be focused into areas of programming or to data science. And uh, you can earn a BSc degree and this is an exit point where you can get a degree from IIT Madras. So this is an official degree from IIT Madras. And a student who earns this, this degree will be uh, and will become the alumnus of IIT Madras. So this gives you the status of an alumnus of IIT Madras. And you can actually uh, exit the program at this level as well. Uh, if you choose to continue, there is a second level for the degree, which is the BS in data science and application, which is the bachelor's of science degree. Here, this is equivalent of a four year degree program. So the credits which are completed for the BSc level will be equivalent of what is a three year uh, degree. The credits completed at the BS level will be equivalent of a four year degree. So completing a four year degree has its own advantages when it comes to pursuing higher education, uh, either in, in the country or abroad. So you can potentially become eligible to apply for MTech programs uh, after clearing gate or apply for programs abroad where uh, a four year degree is required. And so that's, those are the uh, different exit options. So you have come, you will be coming through this qualified for JE advanced mode and you can progress through the program at these various levels. So this is the deep, uh, structure of the uh, data science program that IIT Madras is offering. So please understand that these uh, diplomas and degrees are Senate approved IIT Madras diplomas and degrees, which means the certificates would actually have the signature of the chairman board of governors and the director. You can actually see the sample certificate on our website and uh, students who complete the BSc and BS degrees become IIT Madras alumni and uh, you become a part of a very exclusive club, okay? We need to understand that there is unlimited seats in this program. Uh, this is enabled because we have online mode of instruction for content delivery and exams are conducted in person. So when we say exams are conducted in person, I, I want to reiterate that exams will be conducted only on Sundays in uh, different parts of the country. So there are about 130 centers where exams will be conducted. You can go to a center which is close to you and you can change your center up to one month before the exam and uh, appear for the exam, uh, which could be the quizzes or the end semester exam. So this does not require any advanced uh, qualifications. Sorry, just one second.
Sorry about that. So this does not require you to clear JE advance. Only uh, requirement is the J qualifying to appear for JE advance, which you might have already done. And if you have qualified to appear for JE advance, you can uh, go ahead and join this program. So as I was mentioning, the foundation level has eight courses, English, Math, Statistics, so there are different levels of uh, math and statistics and uh, the programming related courses, which is computational thinking and introduction to Python. So as you can see, the courses start at a very fundamental level, mostly covering uh, foundational concepts from class 11 and 12 to build into more advanced topics, which will help you uh, get into the uh, requirements for the um, data science program and the uh, programming aspects. Okay, so please understand that the foundation level is an important phase and uh, here you need to uh, actually work on the basics, which will help you groom into the uh, good programmers and data scientists. So especially courses like uh, the foundation, the introduction to Python, where programming concepts are covered, become very crucial when you go to the next level of the program. After you complete these 32 credits or eight courses, uh, you would be able to go into the diploma level of the program. So what happens during these courses? So the courses, as I mentioned, have an online delivery, which has various aspects. So you have recorded lectures. So these recorded lectures are uh, recorded by faculty from uh, IIT Madras and other IITs as well. Uh, so there will be activity questions and assignments, practice assignments and related assignments. So you will also have some tutorial sessions which will be available and uh, you will have live synchronous sessions where you will have instructors come and teach you, doubt clearing sessions will happen and so on. In addition to this, there are uh, asynchronous doubt clearing session uh, options like the discussion forum. So and finally, you will have your quizzes and exams. So in the first year uh, courses or the foundational courses, you would you might have programming exams as well, especially in courses in the Python programming course, you will have programming exams, which will also be conducted on uh, Sundays. And so and you come clear these exams and the quizzes, you will get a grade for each of the course. So basically, there is about 15 hours of content uh, given per week. Uh, so each course would require you to spend significant amount of time and we ensure that there is continuous learning. As I was mentioning, there is there are major assignments which need to be submitted every week. Completion of this assignment is required to earn your eligibility to approve, uh, to appear for the in-person final exam. Okay, so and quizzes also are in-person. So there is a continuous learning process with weekly assignments and monthly quizzes and an end term exam at the end of the 12 week session. So this gives a, an overview of how a course is delivered. Um, once you go into the next level, which is the diploma level, there are two diplomas, as I mentioned, there is a diploma in programming and a diploma in data science. And you have your, uh, in the programming, you have six courses and two projects. You have the PDSA, uh, programming and data structures and algorithms, database management, uh, Java application development courses, and Linux shell courses. And there are two app dev projects where you have to develop an application and demonstrate the functionality of the application to the uh, through a viva. And in data science, there are uh, business related courses, which are there are two business related courses, which include the business data management and business analytics. And there are uh, courses which are related to the machine learning foundations, techniques and practice. And then there is a tools in data science course, which is more of a skills course. And uh, there are two projects which are also uh, have to be completed for this data science uh, diploma. So as you can see, there are six theory courses and two projects in each of these diplomas. And upon completing both these diplomas, you will be able to enter into the degree levels where the degree level is, uh, you have the BSc level and the BS level you can see that more advanced topics which are uh, very relevant for the industries and also which will help you uh, seek uh, higher education will be available at the BSc and BS levels. So there are 28 credits required for BSc level 
another 28 credits required for BS level. At the BS level, students can take up apprenticeship and credit this. And at the BSc level, students can actually do internships, but this is not credited. Internships is not, are not credited, but apprenticeship, which is a long-term uh, engagement with a company, is credited. And the, that is an option which is available at the uh, BSc and BS levels. I also want to uh, highlight that at the BSc and BS levels, students can take on-campus courses and uh, at, after completing all the diploma level courses, you can come to campus and you will be able to do courses here. So there are, uh, you can earn uh, up to a certain limit of credits at the BSc and BS level through campus courses as well. Okay. So this is the fee structure which is there. So this gives you some basics uh, on the fee structures for both the programs. So uh, as you can see, um, the foundation level, which is eight courses, the total cost for the foundation certification will be 32,000 rupees. So the one diploma, so uh, what you need to understand is one diploma is basically 32 credits of foundation plus 27 credits at the diploma. So together it is 59 credits. Upon For completing those 59 credits, you would uh, have to pay a, a fee of 94,500 and for two diplomas, which includes uh, the foundation 32 credits plus the 54 credits for the two diplomas, here is the fee which is listed. And BSc degree will include uh, the course for uh, the fee for the foundation, both diplomas and the 28 credits at the BSc level. The same goes for the BS degree as well. So that is how these values are calculated. And also, we want to emphasize that this is a pay as you go model. As what that means is. If you are registering for only two courses, instead of registering for uh, four courses, you pay only for the two courses that you register for. So in the foundation level, uh, for a student who has a family income greater than five lakhs, the fee per course is 4,000 rupees. So which means if the student registers for one course, they pay only 4,000 rupees that term. If they pay, register for four courses, then they would register, for, then they would pay 16,000 rupees. So depending on the number of courses, a student registers for they would pay but the total amount uh, over the all the courses for the foundation level will be the value which is given here so the same uh, structure for the bs in electronic systems is also given so please understand that there are scholarships and education loans which are possible so uh, students who actually get uh, have a family income less than 5 lakhs get a, an interest free uh, loan from IIT Madras, basically it's an interest-free uh, long-term loan which can then be paid by the student back at a later point. So it is uh, basically 50% is uh, considered to be paid from IIT Madras. So only 50% of the fee has to be paid if the family income is less than 5 lakhs. If the family income is less than 1 lakh, then 75% uh, uh, is, uh, is covered from IIT Madras and only 25% uh, has to be paid from the student side. So uh, the fee which you have, so basically if, if the family income is less than one lakh, the total fee for the BS degree will be one fourth of this uh, three lakh uh, 51,000, which would be uh, less than 90,000 rupees, around 88,000 rupees. So this is how the course content will look. So you can see that there is a video content and assignments and uh, which are shown. So this is our portal. So you can watch the videos here. So our uh, learning management system has various features. So you will be able to submit your assignments there. So you will see that there are something called activity questions, which will help you keep track of uh, your learning and how well you have been able to follow what the content has been. And there will also be uh, programming assignments which can be done using the portal itself, using uh, Python or whatever uh, language might be, you might be learning at that point. Okay, so and uh, there are resource repositories which will help you uh, download things so you can actually try and understand the concepts based on and other reading material might also be made available through this source. So uh, let's look at the, so uh, career options. So data science and electronic systems are two of the highly sought after uh, expertise when you're talking about industries. So there are lots of uh, job opportunities which are available. So uh, 
as a data uh, upon completion of the data science and applications degree the various types of positions which could be so, uh, taken up are data scientist data science programmer data analyst business analyst big data engineer etc uh, you can also go into the programming side when you do this data science and applications where you can do can become a full stack programmer and things of that sort so uh, electronic systems is the new degree which we didn't really go into great details about but this program uh, has immense scope uh, there is a lot of uh, focus on developing semiconductor industries and electronics industries in the country so there is a lot of job opportunities which are available in the electronic systems uh, domain as well so some of the job profiles which would be relevant for people who pursue the electronic systems program is electronic system design uh, designer embedded systems developer electronic hardware specialist systems testing and engineer uh, etc Okay. So, uh, here are some of the, again, screenshots of how our uh, live sessions would look. So, you would have live sessions which are conducted for various courses. The instructors will be available. They will try and solve problems with you. They may sit and uh, help in programming. They will clarify uh, concepts and they will also help in troubleshooting code. Uh, various kinds of support will be provided to you. So these live sessions will be available for students to join. So students can join for the live session if the time permits. If at all they have other engagements, they will still be able to watch these live sessions. The links will be shared for them to watch it at a later time. A lot of our students do that and they benefit immensely through these live sessions. So this is uh, a discourse forum. So uh, as I was mentioning, in addition to the synchronous support, which is being provided through the live session, we also have asynchronous support, which is the discourse forum. So here students can go and ask questions where other students can also answer and uh, our instructors and faculty also try and answer questions here. So this uh, is something which is very helpful for students, especially students helping each other out uh, really effective through this uh, discourse forum. So these are our faculty uh, and these are the various people who are involved in the program. So you can see that uh, we have faculty not just from IIT Madras, uh, but from various other top uh, IITs, including IIT Bombay, Karakpur, Kanpur, Gopar. Uh, we have people from uh, IIIT Hyderabad, IIIT uh, and CMI, uh, Google, and various other industry professionals are also involved uh, in the content creation and offering of courses. Okay. So uh, just to give you an overview of the numbers, we are currently at about uh, 17,500 students and out of this around 8,500 are in the foundation level and uh, about 6,000 are in the diploma level and roughly 200 are reached to the degree level. So as I mentioned, the program started only in January of 2021. So it's not even been two and a half years since it started. So uh, more than this, the interesting demographics that might be uh, relevant to you is we have people from all different backgrounds. And what you can see is the employed people are 20%, but the other 80% of the people are currently students who are uh, pursuing another college degree in most cases. So as I mentioned earlier, you can pursue this degree along with other uh, degrees as well. So more than 10,000 of our current students are actually doing that. They are enrolled in uh, a campus program in some other uh, college while they are actually doing this. So this can also be in another, in another IIT. We have students who are pursuing bachelor's degrees, BTECs from IIT, and uh, pursuing this BS in uh, data science with IIT Madras as well. That is also possible. So here are some of our students. So as you can see, there are like varied types of students in the program. We have students who have just recently completed uh, their college degrees. So basically they started the program uh, when they were in college and uh, they are now continuing into the program. So students who didn't have math background, uh, the example we have here, Shruti, uh, stopped my studying math after class 10, but she wanted to come back into this program and get into the math and she was able to successfully continue. We have people uh, who have 10 plus years of relevant experience who are still studying with us and are trying to advance their careers further, but they also enjoy the uh, community and what actually 
is provided for the students. So we also have people who are much, much senior who are uh, learning uh, a new domain and trying to explore something very inter interesting and so on. So uh, in addition to the academic part of it, we also have a very active student life. We have 12 houses uh, and groups within houses which are very active. The students provide support for each other. They conduct intra-house competitions, inter-house competitions. Uh, it could be either uh, co-curricular or extracurricular activities. And uh, we have student clubs where competitions and events are conducted. So we also have uh, one major event where uh, students come to campus and spend uh, three or four days here along with the faculty and other students. So this uh, is an event which is called the IITM Paradox. So this event was organized last year. We had more than 2000 students participate in the event. So the image that you see here was taken during the event. And uh, this year again, we have uh, this Paradox event which will be happening towards the end of this month. So students who are part of this program do get an opportunity to spend time here on campus and experience what campus life is and uh, get a feel for uh, what the various activities which are going on here. Okay. So in addition to students coming here, we also go and meet the students. We travel, uh, different people from the team travel to various places. They meet uh, the students. So the students also meet uh, amongst themselves as we said, there are monthly exams which happen, uh, which are in center. So after the exams, the students actually uh, get together, go out, and they have created their own communities. And now students have a very strong network, which has really helped them uh, through this program. So uh, these are the details of the program. You can find more details uh, using the we website, which is shown here. It is study.iitm.ac.in slash ds for data science and study.iatm.ac.in slash es for electronic systems. So both these programs are uh, open for you. And uh, as to if you have qualified for JE Advanced, you're qualified to appear for JE Advanced, then you are, you are directly admitted into these programs and you can actually join and start studying from these programs uh, once the classes start. So we strongly encourage that you apply for these programs and uh, be a part of IIT Madras in this journey. So with that, I'll uh, you know, stop my presentation and uh, try and answer some of the FAQs which were uh, asked. Yeah. Who wants to read out? You read out. Uh, yeah, can you read it out? I don't have the document. Okay. Yeah, so probably we'll take some questions that uh, have been coming on the G meets also. So uh, some students are asking what they go through the JE counseling. Is this admission similar to the VTEC admission or some other program? If they join us, when will they be removed from the VTEC admission or how do the programs run? So this program runs uh, completely independent of the JE counseling process. So uh, if you join this program, this does not... Uh, mean that you cannot pursue your JE. You can do this along with your JE advanced and your BTEC from IITs or NITs. As I have been mentioning, you can actually do two different programs simultaneously. This program can be studied along with a college uh, degree, which is an on-campus degree. This could include an IIT degree. We have students from IIT Madras who are studying their BTEC in various disciplines who are also studying the BS data science along with us. Various other IIT students are also studying with us. We have uh, hundreds of students actually who are doing, uh, who are studying in uh, a BTEC in IIT and pursuing this BS in uh, data sciences along with us. So that is possible. So this program admission does not uh, overlap with the JE admission for BTEC degrees. This does not have anything in common with that. This is a separate process. You can join this program and pursue this program, and you can continue with your aspirations for a BTEC at IITs. That is, this will not stop you from pursuing that. 
So in continuation, they can do a B.Tech in IIT Kanpur or IIT Delhi and pursue this program from IIT Madras. They can be in two different IITs at the same time. Yes. One campus program, one hour online program. Yes, that's exactly right. So you can actually be in another IIT or an NIT, IIT Delhi, Kanpur, Karakpur, doesn't matter. You can do your B.Tech there while you are doing your B.S. in Data Sciences from IIT Madras. So you, that there is no uh, rule which stops you from doing that. Yeah, so someone asking again that they want to go in for government jobs after this uh, program. They are asking whether this is a valid degree. They want to know whether this is okay for higher education abroad. And they are asking about our own gate exams, whether they can uh, finish this BS and go for that. Okay, so uh, let, let me first uh, try and answer the question about uh, government jobs. So government jobs uh, generally require only a valid degree. That's all that would uh, is usually the requirement and beyond that you have to clear the exams. So uh, IIT Madras degrees, uh, our B.Tech degree or our M.Tech degree or any of the campus degrees are only recognized by the Senate of IITs. And based on that, the degree is issued as a valid degree. So this is a power which has been given to IITs based on a, an act of parliament. And according to that, this degree will also be a valid degree. It's a valid IIT Madras degree, which is approved by the Senate and the certificate will be issued with the competent authorities signing it. So this will be a valid degree, which means you can go and appear for any of the uh, government exams, you should be eligible for them to appear for these exams. As far as GATE, GATE allows students from any degree to appear. So they do allow students from BS degree to appear for GATE exam. And upon clearing of GATE exam, you can potentially join MTech programs, which admit students to, to uh, students who have a background in data science. So uh, as long as the uh, MTech degree Allow MTech or MS or PhD degree allows a bachelor's degree in data science as an eligibility, then you will be eligible to join there as well. So uh, the program is new. So in some places, the official approvals might still be under processing, but this is a valid degree which will which can be used as well. So the same applies for applying uh, abroad as well. Uh, if you are completing the degree and applying. This will be treated as a valid degree. Especially if you are applying for, say, masters in data science or something, I think our bachelors will fit in perfectly well. And some of our students have gotten admission, I think, for masters already abroad. Uh, so they are a bit confused about what is this quiz one and uh, qualifier because our qualifier and quiz one are similar, right? So they are saying that uh, what is the advantage of this JE advance for them to qualify? What is this path? I know you explained okay. it before, but maybe you just want to say what is a quiz? I think they're not sure about what a quiz is. So uh, in IIT system, what happens is there is a continuous evaluation process. So we do not have one uh, semester exam as the, at the end, but instead what we have uh, two quizzes in the middle of the semester as well. So a semester is usually about 12 to 14 weeks uh, at any IIT. So there are two quizzes. So similar uh, model is followed here as well. So basically any course will have two quizzes and an end semester exam. So we have the same thing here. So there will be a quiz one, which follows after four weeks of content and a quiz two, which follows after eight weeks of content and the final end semester exam, which comes after 12 weeks of content. So this is how the uh, any course is structured. So uh, these quizzes are conducted in person. So the, uh, the qualifier itself is for students who have not uh, earned their eligibility for JE advanced. So a lot of students who have not appeared for JE mains or who might not have uh, qualified for JE advanced can go through the qualifier process. So if you have qualified for appearing to the appearing uh, for the JE advanced, then you are directly admitted into the program. So what this means is you can register for courses directly. So when you go for a qualifier process, the first four courses, which I mentioned, English one, math one, statistics one, and computational thinking, all four courses have to be studied for four weeks and you have to clear a qualifier exam. However, as students who have uh, qualified for JE Advanced, so you will be eligible to register only for the number of courses that you are interested in doing. 
which means you can actually do one, two or three courses as well and just appear for the quizzes. You don't have to study all four quizzes, uh, all four courses till end of quiz on or the qualifier. So this gives you a little more flexibility. So you can actually start uh, studying the course knowing that you are already in the program. So that gives you some advantage. And also you can be, uh, you can actually just pay the uh, registration fee and start taking courses directly instead of going through the question of whether you would get it. So basically, they bypass the admission process. They are directly yeah. eligible to start the program, which the others have to go through the qualifier. Right? Okay. So a follow-up question they keep asking is they have to fill exam city choices in the form. So they are saying if I'm already qualified, why should I fill the exam city choices? But this is for the quiz in person. Yeah. Right. So uh, as we mentioned the uh, while presenting, quizzes happen in person, which means you have to go to a center which is close to you where you can actually go and uh, appear for the quizzes. So this could be uh, in your hometown or in the town, in the college uh, town where you are going. So it can be any of these places, but you still have to choose where you want to give your exams. So every month the quiz which happens and the end semester exam which happens at the end of the term, all these require you to go to a center. To know which center you will have go to, we need to know which city you will be appear taking the exam from. So based on that, you will be given a center where you can go and take the exam. So these centers are very similar to what they would have written their KE mains, right? Yeah. It is going so it will be very similar to that. So you will just be going to a center where you took a JE mains or where you will be taking a JE advanced and you will just take the exams. So here the thing is because uh, you may change your city during the middle of the term, we are given the flexibility to change the city where you will be taking the exam up to one month before the exam. So uh, they also have a doubt on uh, the JE advanced uh, exam is on June 4th and we start our term on June 2nd. So many had this doubt of uh, will it impact it, will there be classes. So we told them that they have recorded content, they can watch it after June 4th. But I guess they can apply now if they want to or they can apply in September. Right? So both options are possible. So if you are worried that uh, there will be some overlap, you can choose to apply for the September term. But uh, the overlap will actually not be very significant because uh, the July, June 4th is your uh, JE advanced. Although the content for our courses are being released on June 2nd, you will have time till I think June 12th, yeah, 10, days. 10, 10 days time, around 12th for, for you to submit your first assignments. So, and it basically requires you to watch three hours of videos uh, on concepts, which you, I'm sure most of you are very confident in. Because uh, you would have studied math and statistics and uh, English already. Computational thinking might be slightly new, but it still is mostly logic. So especially in the first week, there wouldn't be much of a difficulty. So you would still be able to watch it after your uh, JE advanced and submit the assignments on time. So there won't be any problem because of that. So I wouldn't really worry too much about it. But in case you would want to take your time, you want to figure out which college you are joining and then to make a decision, the, our, uh, our admission process itself is open for three times a year. So you can come back in September of 2023 or uh, January of 2024 to start the program. So the application for the September 2023 session will start open sometime towards the end of June, beginning of July. So uh, you can keep, a, uh, keep track of our website. We will also send you some reminders and let you know when the portal is open so that you can come and register for the uh, subsequent terms if that is what you choose to do. But uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the overlap. But if you really want to plan your uh, scheduling, you can come back for the September term as well. So one thing they need to remember is that June 2nd start is only for the data science program. If they want to do the electronic systems program, it is only in September. So I guess that is what they have to yeah. be sure about. Okay, the regular question we've been getting for two years. Will I get access to campus facilities such as the library, the gym, and any other in IIM campus? Okay, so uh, this program content delivery is online. So students uh, get content online only. So which means uh, there will be resources which we will provide the content, uh, whatever uh, academic resources are required will be provided through uh, from us through our portal. So that is sufficient for you to uh, pursue most of the courses. So you will not need to actually access the uh, campus facilities. 
So the program is designed that way. And most of the students are anyways from various parts of the country. So accessing campus might also be difficult. But as I was mentioning earlier, at the degree level, there is an opportunity to pursue uh, courses here on campus. At that time, there will be access to campus facilities uh, as and when it is there. But again, that will be for candidates who become eligible for that upon completion of the foundation and both the diplomas. So that's still a long way away. And uh, you are probably going to be very keen on starting the foundation level to, uh, to begin with. Yeah. So uh, we did talk about it, but just to clarify, they are asking whether for exams, they have to come to campus or for interactions, they have to come. So data science and electronic systems has a little bit of a difference yeah. here. So for the data science program, you don't need to come to campus for interactions. You can actually take exams all over the country and you just have to uh, attend live sessions for doubt clearing and so on uh, based on your availability. So data science does not mandate you to come to campus. However, electronic systems is slightly different. Electronic system actually has a hands-on component where students are supposed to do lab uh, experiments using uh, circuits, build circuits and so on. So that part where the evaluation part might happen on campus here at IIT Madras. So this will give you access to campus. So during that time, you can come here, you can spend a week or 10 days here where you will be doing the labs, getting trained on the electronics aspects. So that would be possible in the electronic systems program. In the data science program, uh, all of this will happen online. Okay. So the question about a lot of placements is coming up continuously. It's coming in the chat as well as I think the last two, three days we've been getting a lot of Gmails. So we told them that we are two years old. We haven't yet had a first batch graduate, but our students are getting internships and jobs. So anything about the placement team that we have? So uh, let me give you a brief overview of what we do for placements. So once students complete one diploma or two diplomas, we provide some support for getting internships. So most of our students, as I was showing even in the slides, are currently completed only one diploma. Some have completed both diplomas and are at the degree level. So only these students have become eligible for uh, getting internships. And most of the students who have actually uh, interest sought uh, internships have been getting internships. We have a very active placement team, which interacts with the industries. We are getting people, we are getting industries to come. We organize talks, we, we uh, make, arrange interviews. So people have been getting internships. Uh, anyone who's been interested and who's qualified gets internships. So we are confident that uh, people will get good placements as well. There is a huge demand in these industries. So that is the aspect which we need to be very clear about. Unlike, uh, uh, you don't have to be worried about uh, getting a job because this entire program is rigorous and provides hands-on skills which will definitely enable you to get a job and uh, this domain itself these domains both data science and electronic systems are highly sought after domains where uh, the job market is really hot and you will be able uh, getting absorbed uh, we are if they study good. well, if they put in the effort, yeah. if they put in so the time. That, that part is, uh, I'm assuming, is going to be from you. We are assuming that you are all students who will be sincere. You will go through a rigorous program. Let me be very uh, frank. The program is quite rigorous. This is not going to be very simple. Like I cannot assume it's online, so it means it will be easy. That's not what the program is. The program requires you to put in the time and effort. You need to manage your time carefully especially if you're going to be doing it along with another college degree, you might want to pace yourself. So that's why all courses are offered in all seven, all terms, which means that there will be uh, a summer time when you will be able to focus on uh, this program where you can do more courses. However, in semesters where you might have higher workload in your college, you can take it at a slower pace. All that flexibility is possible. So use it appropriately. But work very hard. This is this program expects you to work hard. This is an IIT Madras degree, which means it is going to have its own rigor and quality. So it is not going to be easy. It is going to require you to work hard. And if you work hard, you will pick up the necessary skills. And placement is not something you would have to worry about. 
Okay, they're worried about uh, if they join a college and if the exams will really clash with their college exams. We have answered, but we may just want to yeah. So, uh, as I have been mentioning multiple times, the exams which we conduct uh, for either the quizzes or the end semester exam or even the programming exams are always have, will always happen on Sundays, which means it will not clash with the physical college schedule. So, you will be able to take these exams. So, as we already mentioned, there are more than 10,000 students who are currently doing this program along with a college degree and they are managing the schedules. It will not be a problem. You will, we will not have dates which will uh, clash with the uh, with the campus for exams. Uh, they have the question again: Will online or distance education? I think we mentioned on the certificate, the so, certificate. Needed. So um, I want to be very clear that this program we don't consider it to be an online program for various reasons. First thing is. The content which we deliver and the quality of uh, evaluation are very high, which means there is a very rigorous program. Both programs are going to impart significant skills and there is a very high rigor involved, which means the, uh, we do not see this program to be any different from a campus degree that we offer. The other aspect is at the degree level, the students are also eligible to come to campus and uh, pursue campus courses which means there is a campus component which is also possible. Students get an opportunity to do internships, apprenticeships while they are doing their degree. So there are like various types of training which is happening. So we consider this program to be on par with a, a campus degree from IIT Madras. So for this reason, we do not list it as an online or a distance education degree. This is not a distance education degree. We don't consider this to be an online degree either. This is a degree which delivers contents online while evaluation is done in person. So this is more of a hybrid uh, degree where you get various things. So the degree certificate itself is shown uh, as a sample certificate. So maybe I can share the screen and show that uh, so that students can get a feel for what the degree will look like. So let me just go there. give me one second. Uh, I'll show the sample certificates so that the students get a feel for uh, how it would look. Okay, so as you can see, this is how a degree would look. So this is a Bachelor of Science BS degree. As you can see, it says IIT Madras, Indian Institute of Technology Madras, hereby confers the degree of Bachelor of Science BS in Data Science and Applications with the name of the learner, and it will be signed by the Registrar, Director, and Chairman Board of Governors. This is exactly the same format as you would have for a BTEC degree. So except that uh, instead of saying BTEC Bachelor of Technology, here it says Bachelor of Science or BS. So that's the only difference. So as you can see, there is no mentioning of online or distance education. So this degree we consider is to be on par with a campus education experience. Okay, so maybe you can highlight the apply now and academic calendar and student like links that they want to see. Okay. These are common questions we're getting. Um, okay. So uh, let's let me just go to the home page. Yeah. So this is the home page where landing page where you will get to. And uh, here is our uh, application portal for the uh, May June batch. So the applications close on May twenty fifth. So you can click on apply now, and you will be able to uh, fill the form. You can sign in with your Google account and fill the required form, which will give you the details. Okay. And uh, if you are going to uh, need more information about the academics, you have the details, the overall structure, the terms, what, what each term is, how these terms are broken down, what course registration is and fee structure. All the details can be found here, the courses. You can also look at the course content. You can see what the courses are. You can see what the course videos are and uh, you will be able to get these details. You can take a look and make a decision based on that as well. So a student life is another interesting thing where you can go and see the various houses which are there. There are 12 houses named after the forests of, the, of India and there are various groups under these houses and each of these uh, houses have their own websites which you can go and take a look. And uh, this is the paradox and student festivals. 
Uh, I'm hoping you're able to see the Paradox website. Uh, you have, you can see that there are various activities which happen, both co-curricular and extracurricular activities, and various uh, events are organized, sports and uh, cultural events and other academic events. So it's a really, yeah. So this would be one thing. And there is also a, a page for testimonials. You can take a look at uh, the various testimonials from our uh, other learners who are already in the program. You can see what they say about the program. So this is basically whatever they have shared is there. It is not uh, curated in any way. You just have all the data there. You can see how what people feel about the program. You can get a feel for whether this is something that would be of interest to you. But you can also follow our social media handle, subscribe to it, and also see what's happening there. The social media handles are at the bottom of the page. So I think they can definitely... Yeah, here are our social media handles. So you can see our Facebook, our Insta, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, I think there's also a WhatsApp messaging service. So we have, uh, you can actually follow us on these uh, platforms. You will be able to get updates and we will also be contacting you with any uh, updates and opportunities which are available. So some uh, questions coming on the chat, which might be relevant. Uh, they are saying, what would we recommend? That they do this with uh, another college degree or uh, is it a risk to do this separately? Or what is our recommendation is what somebody is asking. Okay. So, uh, See, you doing it along with another college degree has its own advantages, spe specifically data science being a program, uh, data science being a discipline which is applied to various other disciplines, having a core domain knowledge can actually be beneficial. So a student pursuing mechanical engineering along with data science will have a lot of value for companies in uh, which are in the domain. So we have had students like that, so who have actually benefited because of the domain knowledge that they have. So that gives a lot of advantages. So that is a, definitely some uh, additional value in pursuing it along with a college degree. So from that perspective, as far as pursuing this as a sole degree, uh, it is definitely doable. There are students who are doing it in the program currently, maybe a couple of thousand students might be doing it as a sole degree. Uh, that would require a more of an entrepreneurial mindset where you have to uh, Try and make sure that you are uh, taking a challenging encounter. Uh, it would require you to make sure you have put in all your effort and you do extremely well in the program because this program would be the sole degree which you will be building your career upon. Right? So this is not just an add-on. So uh, if, if you're doing it as, uh, along with a physical college degree, you will have other things. There are also certain uh, other challenges. It depends like on how you maintain your uh, social life. So whether you would have a student life, a college environment, so how much value you have for that? Would you rather uh, do, uh, do a degree by yourself where you study by yourself? And uh, what is your self-motivation? So all those factors come in. So it's a very individualistic decision. But uh, if you are going to do this as a sole degree, that's not... Uh, a bad idea, which we, it would mean that you can focus fully on this, but doing it with other college degrees has its own advantages. Uh, except that when you do it with another college degree, you might have to take this these courses at a slower pace so that you can manage your time. So you need to figure out what is the most suitable for you. So we have, I think, more than 2,000 students probably with us studying this as the sole degree. So there are enough people doing it also. Yeah. So they can, if there is an opportunity to talk to the BS students, you know, somebody in the circles, maybe you should do that and then you should take a decision on this. Um, the standard question we get, will we have a convocation that we give them the certificates and hard copy at the end of the program once they... So, so, yes, yes, we will. We will have a... The convocation. So we are actually as part, part of the paradox event which happened last year. We had uh, issued some certificates. This year again, we will be having uh, people coming and collecting certificates and diplomas. So only at the diploma level and the degree level, we will be doing that. So especially at the degree level, BSc and BS level, definitely we will be having convocations and where you will be getting a 
physical hard copy certificate uh, that uh, the diploma and degree are, as I mentioned, approved by Senate and uh, approved by IIT Madras Senate, which means these are physical hard copies which will have to be handed over. And uh, one question that's coming a lot from multiple people is uh, the language used in the program. Will anything be available in Hindi? And will at least live interactions be in Hindi and so on? So, so the medium of instruction for this program is English. So you will have recorded content in English. Live sessions also happen in English. Sometimes there may be an instructor who may have one or two sessions which are in regional languages. So. Uh, so Hindi or Tamil or other regional languages, any of these regional languages, it could happen, but that is not something we uh, have tailored into the program. The program's delivery will be in English. So uh, that is going to be the way you have to learn. So we do teach two English courses, which will hopefully build the foundation, which will help you learn as well. So in case you have an inhibition for uh, because of that, we hope that the English language uh, courses that are offered will help you overcome those uh, limitations and still continue learning uh, using English as the medium. Yeah. So a lot of questions on placement, very interestingly. So one they are like, if I'm doing it in a college and I'm doing this degree, can I sit for ITM placements or will that restrict me? That is one. Second one, what is the maximum pay package that somebody can get from <laughs> placements? And... Uh, yeah, so, so a lot of placement related questions is coming up. So would you want to say something on that? So placement for this is a separate process, as I mentioned. So we have an industry interaction team which works specifically on placements. So the, uh, as we already mentioned, the program is reasonably new. People have not graduated yet. They have not even come close to graduation yet. So uh, which means we have not actually placed people. So we do have uh, some details on placements. We do uh, provide some placement support. Uh, we will be helping with placements. But as far as the pay package and things like that, we still have to wait and see how it all pans out. Uh, I can't say give a number which will say this is the number you can expect but the uh, job opportunities are very high there are many opportunities and depending on the skills the abilities and your background maybe there are students who have experience who are in the program as well as i showed student profiles there are students who had uh, been working for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So obviously the, the pay packages for them would be different. So it just, there are too many variables here for us to make predictions on that. But I guess even in the IITs, if they study or the NITs, they study, the pay package is going to vary with the kind of yeah. company they go to, the CGPA they have, whether they go in for a core industry or an IV. So it will be the same here, I guess, right? Yeah. They also try. So that's absolutely right. So you can actually go and look up the placement statistics for the various programs uh, IIT Madras offers, like uh, BTEC, MTech, MS, PhD, all those things. So that's actually uh, public, uh, publicly available. There is a website uh, for placements.iitm where you can go and look it up. So you will see that the pay packages vary anywhere from... Uh, five to six lakhs or all the way to maybe one crore or something. But it, it just depends on the CGPA, the skill sets and the, the domain expertise. There are just too many variables. Uh, the same applies for any college. Uh, only the highest number might have been quoted in some newspaper, which you might have seen. But if you look at uh, medians and averages, uh, the numbers are actually quite uh, reasonable in most cases. So you'll be able to get that data if you are interested. And we expect something along the same lines for the BS program as well. So a lot will depend on the skills you gain and how well you are trained. And so it, it depends on how much effort you put in to learn. Yeah, so I think we answered, but would be good to just clarify again. Can we change the exam city later? Because we don't know where we are going to join college. If we start the program now, how can I fill in a city and how can I go to that? So you can fill in a city now based on where you expect to appear for the first quiz, which will be on Jul July 16th, right? So on July 16th, whichever place you are going to, you are expecting to be at. So you can actually uh, uh, plan and uh, give that as the city. And if you uh, move to a different city after that, for the next quiz and for the end of exam, you can change your exam city 
that option is given to you. So you can change and appear in the university. So that is possible. Okay. So they have a question, but I think it should be okay. Asking, will other IITs accept this degree as an eligibility when we apply to them for masters? So we expect them to. Uh, we are working on that. So we, uh, so IIT Madras has enabled it. IIT Madras uh, has already uh, made amendments to the uh, guidelines and ensured that students with a BS degree will be eligible. So some IITs uh, are already open to it, but some IITs uh, we might have to work on to get these modifications, but we do believe that uh, this degree along with GATE or other uh, entrance exam requirements for the program will uh, in, it will, it will be uh, providing eligibility for the students. So uh, again, obviously the entrance exam clearing is uh, something important that might have to happen, but uh, this degree should not stop you from entering into the programs. That is our understanding. We are working towards that. and. We are reasonably confident that uh, I, other IITs will also admit students from this program. But well, we are also very happy to share some of the students have gotten admissions in, uh, I think, uh, University of Columbia and uh, Canada, some university, University of Minnesota and so on. So yeah. abroad it is getting recognized here too. I think it should happen very soon. So I think that's okay. Uh, they are saying, why did we start it as a BS and not as a BTEC degree? What is the difference that we see in the So, a BTEC has certain guidelines. Okay, so for example, the BTEC degree requires uh, so many courses on math, so many courses in physics, chemistry, and general engineering courses, and uh, so on and so forth. Right, so you have like various kinds of courses like that. So, which all are mandatory for a BTEC uh, degree. So, however, this program has a different philosophy. Both these programs want to provide a skills-based education. So, generally, when we talk about uh, engineering degrees, although we want to build skills, students who complete the degree many a times do not have uh, enough hands-on experience and skills. So, uh, they end up learning very broad topics and uh, very uh, limited hands-on experience is provided. So we wanted to flip the script. So in this program, we wanted to provide a lot more hands-on experience and provide build the skills for the student and then provide the broader understanding in the theory. So for that reason, uh, we needed to have a lot more credits which are focused towards the discipline. So uh, for example, in the data science program, uh, almost all the credits that you earn will be related to data science and programming. The same applies for electronic systems. Uh, however, if you were to do a BTEC degree, uh, only about 40% of the total credits will be in the specialization that is chosen. That is, if you do a BTEC mechanical engineering, only 40% of the courses which you do will actually be mechanical engineering. The other 60% of the courses will be various other topics. However, here we are focusing and making sure that almost 75 to 80% of the courses and uh, projects and practicals and labs are all related to data science or electronic systems, ensuring that you are very, very well trained for an industry profession. So with that in mind, we had to distinguish that clearly with the reason for that. That is the reason with the, to go with a BS degree rather than a BTEC. So I think mostly we have done. There are some questions on documents if they don't have the requisite uh, OBC and Z document or the family income document and they are asking about when. But I think they will get a couple of weeks to apply and even if the document is not available now, maybe for one term they can come into general category. Whenever the documents are available, they can change their category and they can continue in the program. Uh, the fees uh, is 3.4 lakhs for the entire BS in data science and it's about 5.98 lakhs for the BS in electronic systems. Don't add every uh, row in there. This is all for every level exit that we have provided you. So you can probably take that as a piece and piece would be as you go. So that is it. Okay, this question I think we didn't answer. Can international students do BS uh, programs? Somebody says they are in Canada and can I apply? Yes, you can. There are students who are outside the country who are doing exams. So we do facilitate uh, exams for students who are outside the country. You can enroll. We have more than 200 or 250 students who are doing it from various parts of the country, uh, various parts of the world, sorry, uh, including places like Canada and the US. So if you are interested in doing this degree from outside the country, that is possible. You can actually uh, 
get this, uh, you can pursue this degree. Uh, the only uh, challenge will be to appear for the exams. Uh, it will happen according to the Indian time zone. So the scheduling uh, is something you would have to plan. Other than that, uh, there is nothing that stops you from uh, pursuing this degree while you stay outside of India. Okay, so I think we have covered almost everything. All the questions that have been asked, I think, are covered. And uh, we hope that the students can join. So the last date for applying for the June data science batch is May 25th. And for the electronic systems and for the September data science batch, it will be around September 20th. So they can come in at that point of time. Any closing words before we can close this session? Yeah, so uh, I just want to highlight that this is a great opportunity which has been created by IIT Madras. We want all the students who are interested in pursuing IIT quality education and who are willing to put in the hard work to uh, improve themselves and learn uh, to join this program, to benefit from the program. So we strongly recommend that you go to our website, you look at our courses, you look at the content, uh, please join the program. We hope you all of you will be part of the IITM uh, family and you will complete the degree and become IITM alumnus four years from now. So all the best. Please do apply and join the program and we will be looking forward to having you as part of our IIT Madras team. Thank you. Uh, we can close the live stream.